Hello dears, welcome back to our new video on the Croc 1 Rapid Revisions and today we are going to discuss the pharmacology. It will be in the two parts, so let's start from the first part and uh, in this part we will study the mostly the drugs from the base and in the second part we will study the remaining drugs and uh, from the some drugs from the ministry. Okay, so let's start from matronidazoles. So remember the matronidazoles. So matronidazole it is antibiotic, it can be antihelminthic it can be antibiotic it can be anti helminthics we use for amoebiasis lambliasis and for the giardia lamblia okay and the, it can be anti parasitic and it also used for anaerobic infections anaerobic infection means low oxygen or without oxygen it can use for the helicobacter pylori remember the helicobacter pylori they will grow in micro aerophilic condition micro aerophilic condition means where the low oxygen present they will grow in low oxygen medium next is disulfiram and matronidazoles so remember the matronidazole it have the same function as the disulfiram matronidazole also have the same function as disulfiram so it blocks the acetal dehydrogen dehydrogenase and this enzyme is involved in alcohol metabolisms so it this enzyme involved in alcohol metabolisms so remember which drugs involved in alcohol metabolisms or which blocks the acetal dehydrogenase and also can use for alcohol withdrawal that is disulfiram and matronidazole next is levomycetin so levomycetin it's also yes it is antibacterial drugs or antibiotic okay and it is also known as chlorum phenicol levomycetin also known as chlorum phenicol and it is a broad spectrum antibiotic it is a broad spectrum antibiotic it inhibit the 50s ribosomal subunit so we know that in bacteria we have 50s and 30s subunit 70s ribosomes in bacteria which ribosome we have 70 s ribosomes now 70 s 50 s and 30 so 50 or 30 70 yes we are the medical students so 70 50 plus 30 70 now in it inhibit the 50 s ribosomal unit means it is a broad spectrum antibiotic what is the side effect side effect is that it causes the bone marrow suppression so it act on the bone marrow and it leads to the bone marrow suppression it also known as gray baby syndrome so it is also known as gray baby syndrome and remember for the croak if you have bone marrow so bone marrow it produce our stem cell bone marrow have our stem cells so it leads to the hypoplastic anemia we also discussed this question in path physiology so bone marrow remember it cause hypoplastic anemia due to bone marrow suppression levomycetin cause hypoplastic anemia so remember for the croak which i mean it can be present in the histamine we already discussed that it is vasodilator so it is a vasodilator remember it increase the vascular permeability it increase vascular permeability and it is bronchoconstriction this we already discussed before okay now remember the histamine we have the main two type of the receptors present in the histamines what they are they are for h1 and it can be h2 receptor h1 mainly present in the skin lungs or we can say respiratory organs or respiratory parts and h2 receptors they present in the stomach in the stomach they cause peptic ulcer or gastric ulcers now we have the drugs of course we are talking about the pharmacology so we have the drugs now the blocks H2 receptor. So, which drugs block the H2 receptor? That is famotidine, rantidine, and the cimetidine. So, these drugs they block the H2 receptors, and these present in the stomach. Okay, H2 receptor present in the stomach. So, famotidine, the drugs ending with edine or dean and dean. So, these block the H2 receptors. Hence, remember, fam uh, all the drugs ending with the edine they are the yes H2 receptor blocker then there is h1 receptor so h1 receptor they can be first generation it can be second generation and it can be third generation so what are the first generation drugs and uh, why the generation the classification based on 
and its classification mainly based on the side effect like sedations so remember the first generations these are the dimetrol diphenylhydramine and the avil so these are the first generation then clemastine tavigil and the suprastin dimetrol diphenylhydramine avil clemastine tavigil and the suprastin remember dcts dcts so these are the first generation h1 receptor blocker so what are the side effect of that they have the major side effect that cause the sedation or they cause the more slips that's why the people having the sedation problems uh, normally we give h1 receptor blocker that is second generation and second generation that is loratadine and it is the croak favorite drug loratadine so remember lora lo, loratadine so this is the second generation drugs and that is citrazine citrazines and loratadines these are the these are the our second generation drugs. So remember loratadine and the citrazine, these are the less sedative. These are the less sedative. We have also third generation drugs that is very least sedation or no sedation at all. So what they are, they are levo. These are the modified forms of the citrazines and the loratadine. So levo citrazine and dash loratadine. Dash loratadine. So these are the third generation h1 receptor blocker so remember main drug is here loratadine and the citrogens okay the next is succinylcholine so and so what is the succinylcholine it also known as it is also known as diethylenum or listinone it also known as diethylenum or listinone and what they are they are non competitive irreversible muscle relaxants so these are the non competitive irreversible muscle relaxants so who is the non competitive must irreversible non competitive irreversible muscle means they don't have any antidote irreversible means they don't have any antidotes and remember these are the depolarizing so when you will find the depolarizing it means non competitive non depolarizing means competitive so this example of the competitive and also non competitive so depolarizing muscle relaxants these are non competitive and uh, used for the for short relaxation used for short relaxations like used for the in case of the tracheal intubations so in the tracheal intubations the, uh, it is used as a muscle relaxant so diethylenum or listinone it used a muscle relaxant but before going to that we need to check the enzyme pseudo choline stage or butyl choline stage it present genetically so which enzyme present genetically pseudo choline stage or butyl choline stage remember not acetylcholine stage not acetylcholine it is butyl choline stage that enzyme present genetically so which enzyme present genetically and that is butyl or pseudo choline stage now this is inhibited by the succinyl choline which enzyme uh, block the succinyl choline or inhibit the succinyl choline that is pseudo choline stage so if you have the pseudo choline stage then only we will give this drugs and if you without any without any checkups so what with the treatment finally we will do treatment we will do blood transfusions blood transfusion is the treatment for this now remember i told that acetylcholine it's inhibited by acetylcholine stage not succinylcholine is inhibited by acetylcholine stage so remember the acetylcholine it's inhibited by acetylcholine stage and succinylcholine or diethylenum it's inhibited by pseudocholine stage acetylcholine is the neurotransmitter for the peripheral nervous system we know this right yes then next we have curanium 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 then it is non depolarizing muscle relaxant so remember curanium is the non depolarizing and succinylcholine is depolarizing muscle relaxant okay so remember that it is reversible why reversible because they have the antidote so what can, what can have curanium like mevocuranium pancuranium or uh, uh, tubocuranium tubocuraniforms but the mechanism of action the mechanism of action is it binds to the neuronic muscarinic receptors of the parasympathetic and result in the muscles fading or muscles fatigue that leads to flaccid paralysis and what the correlation of the nm receptor that is it affected in myasthenia gravis myasthenia gravis that is autoimmune disorders 
and what the antidote for the curanium antidote for the curanium is the our neostigmine what the antidote that is neostigmine okay so it is non depolarizing remember curanium is reversible they have reversible so non depolarizing muscle relaxant that is curanium depolarizing muscle relaxant that is succinylcholine so what the antidote remember for the curanium neostigmine or the another name of the neostigmine that is yes proserin next drug is acetojolamide next drug is acetojolamide so remember the acetojolamide so what is that it is a diuretics so we will discuss some diuretics not all diuretics so acetojolamide it is diuretics it act on the pct where it act act on the pct pct is proximal convoluted tubules okay mechanism of action is it inhibit the carbonic anhydrase what is the mechanism of action it inhibit the carbonic anhydrase and what is the cofactor for carbonic anhydrase we know that is zinc 2 positive ion what cause maximum hypokalemia that is acetazolamides which diuretics cause high, maximum hypokalemia that is acetazolamide remember all remember all diuretics cause hypokalemia all diuretics cause hypokalemia hypokalemia means decrease potassium except potassium sparing diuretics that we will study little bit later a little bit now then furacemide next drug is furacemide this is also the croak favorite drug so remember furacemide and what they can ask they can ask what is the name so name another name for the furacemide that is lasix and it is a forced diuretic so it is a forced diuretics and where it acts it act on the loop of henle which loop ascending loop of the henle so remember the furacemide it also known as lasix and it is a forced diuretics where it act it acts on the loop of henle and or mainly on the ascending loop of henle what the use is for the use is for pulmonary edema so what they decrease the decrease the magnesium they decrease the calcium they decrease the decrease calcium and usually the normally decrease the potassium okay so remember the keywords here are the forced diuretics and what the use is for the pulmonary edema so if in the question if you never find anything like uh, which is mannitol or uh, osmotic diuretics so remember for the croak any edema will be there so just go for the furacemide if you don't know anything okay so it may be brain edema but uh, there will be congestive heart failure also so if you find any edema and you will confuse like which drugs can help have pulmonary drugs pulmonary edema or brain edema normally for brain edema we have osmotic diuretics but any edema just go for the furacemide or the lasix or forced diuretics which act on the loop of henle next diuretics is thiazides thiazide remember it act on the dct where it act it acts on the dct distal convoluted tubules what is the example for that hydrochlorothiazide hydrochlorothiazide or clopamide hydrochlorothiazide or clopamide what they do they increase the calcium they increase the calcium so underline this they increase the calcium which decrease the calcium which diuretic decrease the calcium furacemide which diuretic increase the calcium thiazide okay so here we have remember the, uh, suppose it is a blood vessels and it is a kidney so loop diuretics it release the calcium so they will decrease the calcium in the blood vessels and they will increase the calcium in the kidney thiazide have opposite effect they will take the calcium they will increase the calcium in the blood vessels and less so less calcium will reach to kidney means there is a decrease calcium in the kidney and thiazide there will be the increase calcium in the blood okay normally if we talk about the increase decrease so we talk about the blood vessels what present in our blood we are normally saying increase calcium increase phosphorus so we are talking about the blood remember the thiazide what the use is use is remember chic what you need to remember c h i c chic ki chic means congestive heart failure what congestive heart failure hypertension insipidus diabetes insipidus and calculi with calcium for these we use the hydrochlorothiazides or thiazides remember the previous year question paper that it cause the metabolic alkalosis so which diuretics cause the metabolic alkalosis that is thiazides and what they how they do 
they by losing the hydrogen ion so if hydrogen ion will remove alkali will be in our body so it causes the metabolic alkalosis so thiazide causes metabolic alkalosis then these are the potassium uh, these are the diuretics which decrease the calcium now we have the potassium sparing diuretics so remember for the potassium sparing diuretics these are the diuretics which spare sparing sparing means there is which increase the calcium sorry which increase the potassium so these are the potassium sparing diuretics okay where they act they act on the collecting duct now remember spironolactone so remember the spironolactone do it will increase the calcium yes and it is the antagonist of aldosterone it is antagonist of aldosterone and used for cone syndrome so what is the drug for the cone syndrome that is cone syndrome that is spironolactone what happen in cone syndrome hyperaldosteronism 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 means more aldosterone will be there more aldosterone more aldosterone means hyperaldosteronism so in the cone syndrome what the aldosterone do they will increase the sodium they will decrease the potassium welcome sodium by by potassium and they will also increase the calcium at very high when there will be more and very very high perceiver hyperaldosteronism in that case it can also increase the calcium what is the side effect of the spironolactone remember the side effect that is gynecomastia so side effect is gynecomastia so if the person having the gynecomastia what is the alternative potassium sparing diuretics that is aplirinone which drugs aplirinone now remember aplirinone it do not it does not doesn't cause gynecomastia it doesn't cause gynecomastia so that's useful in patient having the gynecomastia symptoms okay now remember the mnemonics or all drugs for the potassium sparing diuretics with the help of paste so in the morning what you do toothpaste okay then p4 potassium sparing diuretics p4 potassium sparing diuretics and there is a amyloride spironolactone triamatrin and aplirinone so remember one two more drugs amyloride and triamatrin so these also potassium sparing diuretics okay next is anti arrhythmic drugs so anti arrhythmic and what is the arrhythmia yes fluctuation in the heart rate okay what is so what the anti arrhythmic drugs the drugs like procainamide class 1 so it uh, categorized into class 1 class 2 class 3 class 4 and miscellaneous class so remember the class 1 class 1 these are the sodium blocker these are sodium blocker okay so class 1 these are sodium blocker and the, remember example procainamide and lidocaine so procainamide and the lidocaine what the procainamide do they are the sodium blocker class 1 anti arrhythmic drug what the side effect of the procainamide sle so which anti arrhythmic drug causes systemic lupus erythematosus that is procainamide next is lidocaine lidocaine the drugs ending with ane drugs ending with the ane that is cane that is anesthetics that is anesthetics there is anesthetics so remember the lidocaine act as both anesthetic as well as good arithmetic drugs it is act, act as good arithmetic as well as local anesthetic drugs okay okay anesthetic as well as arithmetic uh, what are other example of anesthesia because i didn't mention any here that is remember procaine lidocaine mevocaine remember the procaine it cause maximum allergy it cause maximum allergy okay so lidocaine procaine mevocaine buprocaine all the drugs ending with the cane are the local anesthetics now the class 2 class 2 these are the beta blockers so class 1 sodium blocker class 2 is the beta blockers remember the beta beta means the adreno receptors these are the adreno receptor or sympathetic receptors these are the adreno receptors then there is a metoprolol asmolol and the atenolol so these are the beta blocker adreno receptors 
and what is the drug of the choice for the atrial fibrillation and the atrial flutter so remember all the drugs ending with the lol all the drugs ending with lol are the beta blockers all the drugs ending with the lol are the beta blockers metoprolol remember the mia mia babu aur samajh gaye honge tum then class 3 class 3 is our class 3 is amilo what is that amiodron so that is amiodron okay amiodron amiodron is the longest acting anti arrhythmic drug so what is the longest acting anti arrhythmic drug that is amiodron so which is the longest acting anti arrhythmic drugs amiodron and what they cause they are the potassium channel blockers so these are potassium channel blockers who are the potassium channel blockers class 3 and what the mechanism faction is they prolong the repolarization so remember the amiodron the class 4 is diltiazems and verapamil diltiazem and the verapamil and l calcium channel blocker what the l calcium channel blocker remember so these are the l so uh, calcium channel with the two types l and t so remember diltiazem and the verapamil they blocks the l calcium channel blockers and can be used as monotherapy in case of stable angina so remember all these antiarrhythmics suck that's enough okay then we have the calcium channel blockers let's like talk about the anti epileptic drugs or epilepsy so what is the epilepsy it is like abnormal functioning in the brain due to increase of the gaba okay the calcium channel blockers in the epilepsy then remember these are the sodium valproate these are the sodium valproate sodium valproate okay so we already discussed the mechanism these are the calcium channel blockers so calcium channel so these are calcium channel as well as sodium channel blockers okay what they do they increase the gaba by inhibiting its metabolism so they are inhibiting its met what is the mechanism of action of the what is the function of the gaba gamma amino butyric acid what is the function that is inhibitory neurotransmitter so it inhibit the neurotransmitter so we are inhibiting its metabolism okay so increase the gaba so epilepsy it can be like partial seizures or the generalized seizure partial seizure also known as focal seizure okay now the sodium valproate they increase the gaba by inhibiting its metabolism and these are the first line drug for the epilepsy mainly the for the partial or the focal seizures now the drug of the choice for that is myoclonic seizures the drug of the choice sodium valproate is the drug of the choice for the myoclonic seizures drug of choice for the myoclonic seizures now they have side effects what are the side effects they have yes they have teratogenic effect we know one my uh, protozoa that is toxoplasma gondii also have yes which effect yes that is also teratogenic effect but the most common side effect of the sodium valproate that is nausea and the vomiting so nausea and vomiting is the most common side effect of the sodium of the sodium valproate next drug is calcium channel blocker ethoxamide which drug ethoxamide so ethoxamide these are also calcium channel blocker yes they what is the drug of the choice so it is the drug of the choice in case of typical absence seizures in in case of typical absence seizure so remember remember typical absence seizure so you don't need to remember for here that typical or atypical so just remember ethoxamide is the only drug for the absence seizure okay so four crook just remember if you don't want to know much more about what is the absence seizure so just remember ethoxamide is the only drug for the absence seizure okay what is the side effect they cause systemic lupus erythematosus toxic to the cns and what is the absence seizure like person is uh, having the staring to at the space and having some uh, uh, unawareness problem will be there so these all are characteristics of ethoxamide next is sodium channel blocker so what drugs they are the sodium channel blockers which drugs yes that is phenytoin phenytoin कार्बामाजीपाइन लेमोट्रीजिन टोपीरामेट सो दीज ऑल आर द सोडियम चैनल ब्रोकर्स सो रिमेंबर द फेनेटोइन रिमेंबर ओनली द वन लाइन दैट इज द ड्रग ऑफ द चॉइस फॉर न्यूरोपैथिक पेन सो न्यूरोपैथिक पेन इज द ड्रग ऑफ द चॉइस विच न्यूरो दैट इज फेनेटोइन दैट इज फेनेटोइन इज द ड्रग ऑफ द चॉइस फॉर द न्यूरोपैथिक 
pain. Okay, then uh, the drug of the choice for the partial seizures and trigeminal neuralgia. So, what is the drug of the choice for the trigeminal neuralgia? That is carbamazepine, and the drug of the choice for the partial seizure is also carbamazepine. Lomotrigine or lamotrigine, it uses the second line in absent seizure. So, you, if you don't want to, just I told that for the croak, it's enough. So, if you want to remember, you can, but if you don't want, just cut it. So, remember the lamotrimogen, it no action on the GABA release and it's safe in the pregnancy. So, which drug is safe in the pregnancy anti-epileptic drug? Lamotrigine. Now, next is topiramate. Remember the topiramate is sodium as well as potassium blocker. It's sodium as well as potassium blockers. Okay, the next is our sedative hypnotics. Sedative hypnotics means which cause sleeping. So, what are these? These are our sedative hypnotics or we can say tranquilizers drugs. Tranquilizers. Tranquilizers. Okay, that is benzodiazepines and barbiturates. Benzodiazepines and the barbiturates. So, benzodiazepines and barbiturates. So, benzodiazepines, these are the longest, these are the longest acting benzodiazepines. Longest acting, these are the can be shortest acting benzodiazepines and the short acting benzodiazepines. Longest acting, we know the very famous, yes, that is diazepam. Diazepam, remember, that is muscle relaxant. It has lots of function. What function it can have? Diazepam. So, diazepam, remember, it can have muscle relaxant. It used for alcohol withdrawal. It has a calming effect. And so remember, it have the calming effect, alcohol withdrawal effects, and muscle use as muscle relaxant. Then another the clonazepam. Remember what which drug clonazepam. So clonazepam, remember, it is used for absent seizures and used for infantile spasm. So which drug used for the infantile spasm? That is clonazepam. Clonazepam, infantile spasm, clonazepam. Then midojolum. Midojolum, it's shortest acting benzodiazepines. What is the Lora G palm? Lora G palm. Short acting benzodiazepines, that is Lora G palm, and that is the status epilepticus. So, Lora G palm is used for the status epilepticus. Status epilepticus, which drugs use for status epilepticus? Lora G palm. These are short acting benzodiazepines. So, remember the benzodiazepines and barbiturates, they also act as anti epileptic drugs okay so what are the antidote for the benzodiazepines so what are the antidotes flumagenil bilkul say very good then barbiturates another sedative hypnotic say barbiturates so barbiturates these are example phenobarbitol these are the microsomal inducer remember the phenobarbitol these are the microsomal inducer and what the antidote for the barbiturates that is bamigrite that is antidote that is Bamigrite. Bamigrite. Okay. What is the antidote for the barbiturates? Bamigrite. Then next is drug nitrogen palm. So drug nitrogen palm we know that is a sleeping pill. Next is our opioids. Opioids. So the drugs which act on the opioid receptors are the opioids. So it can be natural opioids, semi-synthetic and synthetic. Natural opioids we know that is a cause the severe addiction that is morphine, codeine, noscapine, nozcapine, nozcapine that is morphine, codeine. So morphine we know it is a analgesic or used for severe pain. And codeine it is antitussive used for the cough as well as analgesic. Semi-synthetic, remember heroin. So, what is the another name of heroin? That is diacetyl morphine. Diacetyl morphine is the heroin. It is semi-synthetic. It is semi-synthetic. Diacetyl morphine. Then another is synthetic opioid. Remember the synthetic opioid fentanyl. Fentanyl. So, synthetic. So, why we need to produce synthetic? Because it is 100 times more potent or powerful okay 100 time more potent than morphine more potent than morphine and what the use is it can use in the neuroleptic analgesia as well used in anesthesia so it used as 
न्यूरोलैप्टिक एनेलजेसिया एज वेल एज इन एनेस्थेशिया ओके यस नाउ द नेक्स्ट इज ओपियोइड एगोनिस्ट लाइक सेम व्हाट यू आई नो आई होप यू नो अबाउट द एगोनिस्ट एंड द एंटागोनिस्ट so agonist means same action and antagonist means opposite oxen opposite actions so opioid agonist means they act on the opioid receptors they act on the opioid receptor yes so for the example we studied that is morphine so morphine remember it analgesic for the severe pain analgesic for analgesic what is the analgesic analgesic means yes yeah i can hear you that is pain killer very good then analgesic is the pain killer for the severe pain now what is the labor pain we have the severe pain in labor pain cancer pain myocardial infarction breast cancer lung cancer we have very severe pain so in this in that case we use morphine but we cannot use for the children can't use for children for children then morphine morphine what they do it increase the histamine release they increase the histamine release next is codeine next is codeine so codeine remember it is anti tussive it is anti tussive it used for mild to moderate cough and it is narcotic it have the sedative uh, addiction addictive effects because all the opiates are mainly the addictive effects okay and it also uses analgesics next is tramadol tramadolum pyridol promidolum tramadolum pyridolum so remember the tramadolum promidolum it mild use for mild to moderate pain so it which analgesic use for the severe pain that is morphine and which which use for mild to the moderate pain that is promidol but the mechanism action they act on the opioid receptor they act on the opioid receptor but the analgesics sorry these are the non narcotic remember the tramadol tramadol and promidolum these are the analgesics so one question in the ministry in which they are asking the same drug like the morphine and uh, uh, given to the child so that is the tramadolum and remember the promidolum is we use mainly for the children's and for child mild to moderate pain promidolum it's uh, good anti good analgesics then opioid antagonist opioid antagonist so what the opioid antagonist what the antidote for the morphine poisonings yes you can answer this so these are the opioid antagonist same thing so naloxone these are the naloxone so test acting so nalmefin and naltrexone so these are the same thing so remember naloxone nalmefin and the naltrexone so don't confuse if in the question they will give you naloxone nalmefin and naltrexone so these are the same things so naloxone these are the so test acting nalmefin it is a short acting and naltrexone it is the longest acting drugs then next is lithium so lithium remember it is the drug of the choice in the profile axis of the mania and also used for bipolar disorder it is also used as bipolar or the drug of the choice for the bipolar disorder drug of the choice for the bipolar disorder okay now let's talk talk about the extra pyramidal side effect so extra pyramidal or disease that is parkinson disease so it is extra pyramidal disease which disease yes extra pyramidal disease extra pyramidal disease okay so what the treatment we give that is levodopa plus carbidopa so levodopa plus carbidopa we use for parkinson disease what the happen in the parkinson yes tried will be there which tried so there will be bradykinesia rigidity and tremor and who gave that that is virchow tried which tried virchow tried seen in parkinson disease okay next is typical antipsychotic so next topic is or next drugs is about the antipsychotic so what the antipsychotic so these are neuroleptic these are the neuroleptic typical antipsychotic also no neuroleptic what is the mechanism of action they will block the d2 receptor d2 receptor means dopamine dopamine 
two receptors. So dopamine and the two D one D two. So it will block the D two receptors. These are typical antipsychotics. But the use is schizophrenia, second line, Huntington's chorea. Remember, or uh, psychosis, neuroleptic, and uh, hallucination, schizophrenia. Huntington's chorea and any other disease related to this, then you will find the option ME. So what that amina gene, ME tripatyline. So remember the ME for all these keywords. So remember all of it. If you don't know anything about the neuroleptic, so just follow this. And there are loads of question in the ministry book. From fifty one hundred to one fifty, hundred to one fifty, there uh, all the questions are about the antipsychotic drugs. So you can check it there. The next is about the. It depends on the potency. So there is a low D two potency like molybdenum and phenothiazin. What the molybdenum and phenothiazin? So phenothiazine, remember, chloropromazine or aminazine. In the Ukraine, it's sold as aminazine, and another country it's sold as chloropromazine. So remember, they have the low D2 potency, that is aminazine. So aminazine or chloropromazine, so ME. Again, the ME. ME means antipsychotic drugs. So remember, it's important drugs for the croak. High potency drugs, that is butyrophenone. High, that is butyro, butyrophenone. Butyrophenones they are the haloperidol and haloperidol and droperidol. So remember for the droperidol, it use a neurolept analgesia or hal remember haloperidol. What the side effect of antipsychotic drugs that these are hyper cause they cause hyper prolactinemia and they cause extra pyramidal side effect. What they cause they cause the extra pyramidal side effect. Okay. So who cause extra pyramidal side effect? Mainly the aminazines and other drugs, other antipsychotic drugs. So remember, we have the, it's the most common symptoms is ek the ek eka ekthesia. Ekthesia means restlessness will be there. That the most common cause for the extra pyramidal symptoms seen in due to antipsychotic drugs. Next drug is droperidolum. So dopaidolum, we already discussed that it causes the neuroleptic analgesia or used as neuroleptic analgesia. Then there is a treatment for the alcohol dependent treatment as well as smoking dependent treatment. So remember the alcohol dependent treatment like disulfiram, which drugs disulfiram, naltrexone, and a cram, a camprosate. So these drugs are used for the alcohol dependent treatment. For the smoking-dependent treatment, we use bupropion, varicelin, and nicotine patches. Okay. Then there is a big group of the drugs that is antimicrobial drugs, where there is a loads of bacterial antibiotics. Okay, and antifungal, antiviral. So all comes under antimicrobial drugs. Okay, that discusses antimicrobial drugs. Now remember the antimicrobial drugs. We have the penicillin and the cephalosporin. I'm not saying the like it's bitter like dum 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 dum. All like we will discuss like penicillin, cephalosporin. So remember the penicillin and the cephalosporin. These are the bitter lactams. These are the bitter lactams. What they cause? They block the transpeptidase enzymes. Hence, it directly block the cross linking of these enzymes. That's why penicillin and the cephalosporin. These are the bitter lactams. Next drug is carbenicillin. So carbenicillin is wide spectrum beta lactam, wide spectrum beta lactam, and it is used for pseudomonas infection mainly. So carbenic carbenicillin, we know that is the drug of the choice for the pseudomonas. Carbenicillin disodium, full uh, full name carbenicillin disodium. Next drug is p paracillin. Which drug? P paracillin. So p paracillin, remember. It used for the pseudomonas. It used for the pseudomonas as well as Klebsiella. So pseudomonas and the Klebsiella. What drugs we use? Piperacillin. Next is syphilis. For the syphilis, which penicillin we use? 
बेंजाथीन पेनिसिलिन जी एंड द बिस्मत ओके सो सुडोमोनास एंड द क्लैपशेला पेपेरासिलिन कार्बेनिसिलिन इज द ड्रग ऑफ द चॉइस फॉर द सुडोमोनास इट इज अ वाइड स्पेक्ट्रम बीटा लैक्टोन बीटा लैक्टोन स्पेनिसिलिन सिफेलोस्पोरिन दीज आर द बीटा लैक्टम ब्लॉक ट्रांसपेप्टिडेज एंड सिफिलिस व्यूज बेंजाथीन पेनिसिलिन और रिमेंबर द बेंजाइल पेनिसिलिन और बिस्मत Now the drugs that act on the protein synthesis or abnormal protein synthesis. So they cause the abnormal protein synthesis. So these are thirty s blocker and the fifty s. In the bacteria we know there is seventy s percent. In bacteria there is seventy s percent means there is a thirty s and fifty s. So these are thirty s blocker and the fifty s blocker. What are the thirty s blocker? These are the tetracycline and amino glycosides. So tetracycline and amino glycosides these are thirty s blocker. That but mechanism of action is different. But both they inhibit the pro, uh, formation of process of thirty s that is ribosomal subunit. Fifty s remember chloram phenicol macrolides and the lime zolid. So these are our yeah chronic myeloid leukemia. Chronic myeloid leukemia mean C M L. So remember, chloram phenicol, microlids, and lime zolid. And remember, Tata. Tata means tetracycline amino glycoside. Tetracycline amino glycoside. So Tata. Two times Tata. Then CML, chloram phenicol, macrolids, and the lime zolid. These are the 50s inhibitor. Now chloram phenicol do they block the peptide transferase enzyme? And macrolides or lime zolid they block the transferase enzyme. So they both these both enzyme present in bacteria. So these both enzyme present in the bacteria. Then there is a tetracycline. So what is the tetracycline? Mechanism of action is the and they are the analog of the tRNA. So these are the analog of tRNA. Now remember the tetracycline. Sorry, it is not tetracycline. Deoxycycline. Deoxycycline is the drug of the choice. In which case, my pink RBC. Doxycycline, not deoxy. Doxycycline is the drug of the choice in my pink RBC. My pink RBC means remember M, P, and RBC. So my pink RBC is the drug of the choice is doxycycline. What the what are the my pink RBC? Used for mycoplasma, hominis, profile axis of plaques, pleurodesis, rickettsia, borrelia, brucella, chlamydia, cholera. So you can remember like dream, rickettsia, borrelia, brucella, chlamydia, cholera, rickettsia, borrelia, brucella, chlamydia, cholera, rickettsia, borrelia, brucella, chlamydia, cholera. Repeat it like two or three times, you will remember it. So the in these all cases we use doxycycline. Okay, so what are the side effect of the tetracycline or the doxycycline? These are hepatotoxic. Okay, so what they increase the risk in the pregnant lady? So if the pregnant lady they have highest risk of the hepatotoxic, that's why it's contraindicated. And one more reason for that that it increase the calcium bindings. Increase in calcium binding means it contraindicated with the milk. दूध के साथ कभी मत लो क्या टेट्रासाइक्लिन दूध के साथ कभी मत लो टेट्रासाइक्लिन दैट इज और डॉक्सी साइक्लिन सो इट कॉन्ट्रा इंडिकेटेड विद द मिल्क शुड नोट बी टेकन इन एम्प्टी स्टमक एंड दे डिपोजिट इन द बोन और द टीथ इफ इट दे डिपोजिट इन इन द बोन दे कोज द एबनॉर्मल ग्रोथ दे कोज द एबनॉर्मल ग्रोथ वट एबनॉर्मल ग्रोथ दे डू यस Yes, okay. So the abnormal growth means abnormal growth of bone. Contraindicated. That's why contraindicated in pregnancy and children. So maybe because in the pregnant lady it can affect the child also. And if they deposit in the teeth, then it causes the yellow discoloration. It causes the yellow discoloration. Pille daante tere to. So. means it will be yellow discoloration due to tetracycline then amino glycosides amino glycosides remember all amino glycosides these are the nar the nephrotoxic yes yes they are the nephrotoxics and they are nephrotoxics and they cause hearing cause 
hearing loss loss damage the hair cell that's why they cause the hearing loss now what the example streptomycin neomycin gentamicin and amikacin so these are the amino glycoside yes uh, so these are the amino glycoside streptomycin neomycin gentamicin amikacin what is the mechanism of action mechanism of action is the misleading of rna so don't forget that so just remember they are the 30s inhibitor amino glycoside is the 30s inhibitor okay Next is our amikacin, capriomycin, candamycin. These are the second line TB drugs. So these are the second line TB drugs. Remember the macrolids erythromycin or azithromycin. So these are the macrolids. Okay. So tetracycline and the amino glycosides. These are the 30s blocker. Chloramphenicol, macrolids, and the linezolid. These are the 50s blocker. Remember the two example for the macrolids: erythromycin and azithromycin. Erythromycin, azithromycin. Erythromycin, azithromycin. Okay. And with the remember, erythromycin is the drug of choice for the treatment of pertussis and the diphtheria. It is the treatment for the drug of the choice for the treatment of the pertussis. and the diphtheria okay so pertussis and diphtheria fluoroquinolones fluoroquinolones remember is the drugs ending with the fluoxacin so drug ending with the fluoxacin they comes in the category of the fluoroquinolones the fluoroquinolones the drugs ending with fluoxacin Remember the most active fluoroquinolones drugs that is ciprofloxacin. Which drug? Ciprofloc. Cipro. So it normally used as named as cipro. Give me cipro or give him the cipro. That's good. Ciprofloxacin. So it's a drug of the choice in the traveler diarrhea. It is the drug of choice in the traveler diarrhea. it is the drug of the choice in the traveler diarrhea it is used for the typhoid carrier pyelonephritis and anthrax so ciprofloxacin it is the drug of the choice in the traveler diarrhea as well as in typhoid carrier as well as pyelonephritis and anthrax next is ofloxacin and moxifloxacin ofloxacin and the moxifloxacin they also used as second line drug in the tb and the leprosy so i told that ending with the floxacin means Fluoro, you know, loans. That is what is the side effect? The most common side effect. The cause tendinitis, tendinitis, tendon and tendinitis. So they cause the tendinitis. And other effect is they cause cartilage growth defect. So who cause cartilage growth defect? That is fluoro, you know, loans. And who cause teeth color yellow coloration? it is macrolid no 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 amino glycoside no 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 that is yes doxycycline or the tetra cycline they cause the yellow discoloration and fluoroquinolones they cause cartilage growth defect next is cotrimoxazole cotrimoxazole these are the biseptol sulfonamides plus trimethoprim sulfonamide plus trimethoprim prim so they inhibit the dhps means they inhibit the dihydroterate synthesis and they inhibit the dihydroterate reductase so trimethoprim and sulfonylamide they are have the both they both these are the drugs in present in a one drug that is cotrimoxazol or the bisel biseptols sulfonylamides another name is sulfina lamides sulfonylamides so it inhibit the dhps dihydroterate synthase and inhibit the dhrs dihydrofolate reductase and what the enzyme do they both enzyme used in the folic acid synthesis so they inhibit the formation of the folic acid synthesis which drugs cotrimoxazole or the biseptol another drug is amphotericin b okay let's talk about the antifungal drug here that is amphotericin b so amphotericin b remember these are the antifungal drugs 
वॉट द यूज फॉर द ड्रग ऑफ द चॉइस इन सिस्टमिक फंगल इन्फेक्शन म्यूकोरमाइकोसिस वट इज म्यूकोरमाइकोसिस That is black fungus. That is black fungus. White black. Why it named as black? Because they cause where it will affect, like it affect the face or the sinuses. So it will make them black. That's why it's named as black fungus. But another uh, drug of the choice used for used for kala ajar. So M4 tericin B. Remember kala ajar, mucormycosis, and systemic fungal infection. So there is a three. I told M4 for M4 tericin B. What is the drug of the choice? M4 tericin B. Systemic fungal infection, mucormycosis, and the kala ajar. Kala ajar, Lasmania donovani. Lasmania donovani, or dono donovani. Okay. Next is ajol. Ajol is also antifungal drugs. All drugs ending with the ajol are the antifungal drugs. So antifungal drugs these are the ajols. Remember, like example, imidazole. What imidazole? Triazole. So these are the fungal and human steroid synthesis. Example, ketoconazole, clotrimazole, clotrimazole, clotrimazole or ketoconazole is the best for the antifungal infections. Then it. triazoles it inhibit the fungal steroid synthesis that is fluconazole fluconazole itraconazole and voriconazole what is the mechanism of action they inhibit the ergosterol synthesis what is the mechanism of action they inhibit the ergosterol synthesis so which drugs inhibit the ergosterol synthesis what is ergosterol they help in the formation of fungal cell wall so who which drug inhibit the ergosterol synthesis that is ajoles another drug remember nistatin 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 remember that is yes that is that is that is nistatin remember it is a topical antifungal and mainly used for only candida so candida albicans white fungus candida albicans white fungus nistatin okay let's Talk about antidote for today. Oh my God, loads of antidote here. Yeah. Okay, let's remember it. Antidote for the beta blocker glucagon. Beta blocker glucagon. Beta blocker glucagon. How will, how, how you can remember? Just chanting with me or just revise with me. Okay. beta blocker glucagon beta blocker glucagon benzodiazepine flumagenil benzodiazepine flumagenil benzodiazepine flumagenil barbiturates bemigride barbiturates bemigride barbiturates bemigride acetaminophen acetaminophen paracetamol acetaminophen paracetamol n acetylcysteine acetaminophen paracetamol that is what antidote n acetyl cysteine aceto a n a n means n acetyl cysteine warfarin vitamin k warfarin vitamin k heparin protamine sulfate heparin protamine sulfate heparin heparin antidote protamine sulfate heparin antidote protamine sulfate atropin antidote neostigmine or what curenium curani foam antidote neostigmine एट्रोपिन एंटीडोट नियोस्टिकमाइन कूरेनियम कूरेनिफॉर्म एंटीडोट नियोस्टिकमाइन आयरन एंटीडोट डीफोक्सामाइन आयरन एंटीडोट डीफोक्सामाइन आयरन डीफोक्सामाइन गिव मी योर आईडी गिव मी योर आईडी सो आईडी मींस आई फॉर आयरन डी फॉर डीफोक्सामाइन आयरन डीफोक्सामाइन ओपियोइड और मोर्फिन पॉइजनिंग जस्ट वी स्टडीड नैलोक्सोन नाल और नाल्ट्रिक्सोन और पोटेशियम पर मैग्नेट और द पर मैग्नेट ओके सो रिमेंबर विच ड्रग्स ओपियोड और द मोर्फिन पॉइजनिंग नैलोक्सोन और द पोटेशियम पर मैग्नेट ओपियोड और द मोर्फिन पॉइजनिंग नैलोक्सोन नाल्ट्रिक्सोन नाल नालफिक्सिन और पोटेशियम पर मैग्नेट ड्रग फॉर द मशरूम पॉइजनिंग मशरूम पॉइजनिंग एट्रोपिन मशरूम पॉइजनिंग एट्रोपिन एट्रोपिन नियोस्टिकमाइन atropin neostigmine what is the drug for the antidote for methemoglobin poisoning antidote for methemoglobin poisoning yes 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 that is 
methylene blue or the Prussian blue methylene blue or the Prussian blue drug for any metal mercury bismuth any metal drug for any metal unithiol mercury bismuth or any metal unithiol mercury bismuth or any metal unithiol magnesium calcium bromide chloride bromism chlorism so remember mcbc mc most careful and be careful mcbc okay guys so remember these antidotes beta okay one more one more time beta blocker glucagon benzodiazepine flumagenyl barbiturates bamigrate acetaminophen paracetamol and acetylcysteine warfarin vitamin k heparin protamine sulfate they cause chemical antagonist they are chemical antagonist Atropine neostigmine, curinium cruniform neostigmine, iron defoxamine, give me your ID. Opioid or morphine poisoning, naloxone, naltrexone, potassium permanganate, yes. Mushroom poisoning, atropine, yes. Methemoglobin poisoning, methylene blue, yes. Mercury bismuth or any metal, unithiol, yes. Magnesium calcium, yes. Bromide chloride, yes. Okay. Then see you in the next part.